Let's go into the options here. Auto fire. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Auto fire on? Yes, please. <laughs> Welcome back to Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and if I was in Japan, I would be involved in a crime right now. I am playing the arcade Capcom hit Forgotten Worlds, and apparently it's illegal to play this game in Japan. I don't I don't understand what law we're breaking, but uh, I guess I guess there are laws in Japan about what games you can and cannot play, guys. Uh, this, of course, is one of the games from the book of Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die, and this is the 397th game that we are playing from that book. So without further ado, I'm going to slam some quarters in here, and we're going to get going in Forgotten Worlds. Forgotten Worlds, by the way, is an awesome... Uh, it, it just has an awesome premise for a game. Uh, some god named Bios in the 29th century took over Earth and uh, almost wiped... or, like, just sort of left it in ruins... And now it's up to these, like, muscle-clad... You saw them. They had, like, mohawks and stuff in the cutscenes before the level started. These muscle-clad, contra-looking dudes to fly around through sheer will alone. My guy has no backpack or no projectile that seems to be, like, you know, no, no mechanism for actually flying. The only... what I, All I can figure out is he is flying based on having the right muscles. Like, he's just... He's got so much muscles that he has attained flight. Um, I would have loved to have been in that pitch meeting... Where they're like, yeah, we want to have the main character fly. And they're like, all right, so he'll be like a spaceship or something. They're like, no, he's just going to be like a really muscly dude. Like, really muscly. And they're like, but how's he going to fly? And they're just like, are, are you looking at this concept art? He, he's he got muscles. He's flying on muscles. Um, anyway, here we are in a shop, by the way. That first sort of sequence went by really fast. So one of the unique things about this uh, game, it's a side-scrolling shooter, but it has a shop where you can buy stuff. So, for instance, we can buy auto-tracking missiles, we can buy boosters. Oh, my time is running out. Let's go ahead and buy some auto-tracking missiles. And uh, I guess I guess we're ending. I did not press a button there, we just ran out of time. That is a shop that does not give you a lot of time. And now we have missiles, which is totally cool. So this is actually a very uniquely controlled game. I should talk about that as well. Um, I have a joystick right now, which controls my movement on the screen, but then I have a dial that actually controls which way I'm facing. Whoa, you can actually, like, it, it's like 360 degrees of, of direction you can go here. Um, so yeah, you can, you can fire in literally any direction, which is very unique, and it's actually kind of hard to, uh, to get used to. Luckily, I am playing this on an emulator, um, I don't have this, this arcade machine in my house, uh, so it is an emulator, but luckily... I actually had an RK or an Xbox 360. I, I forget what it's called. It's like an arcade, a, a classic arcade style controller. And it, oh god, what's happening here? What is that in the background? It looks like a Sarlacc pit uh, that's growing on a wall. Oh, gross. Um, but yeah, luckily I had this Xbox controller, which was specifically designed to play these like old school arcade games. And it has a dial. And uh, the dial actually works pretty effectively here. So. Um, I can I can go ahead and use that. I'm so low on health, but I think I'm I'm I think this is the boss, unless I I'm mistaken. So, yeah, the premise is the 29th century a boss a, a god named Bios pretty much like wrecked the world, and so you are on a quest to destroy Bios. But you're you're also there to destroy like there's my dude. You cannot stop me with Paramecium alone, whatever that means. Um, before you can get to Bios, you have to destroy the eight gods that work for him. Like, how badass is that? That's like one of the most badass plots I've ever heard in my life. You know, it's like, we're not, we're not just going to kill a video game boss, we're on a mission to kill a god, and we're just going to kill eight gods on the way. Like, when you have god-killing technology, I think you're a pretty badass super soldier. Okay, we can, uh, weapon fire increases in damage, can reincarnate blaze the whole ground i like this being able to have more damage increase vitality max i like that can i get this a couple of times your share is gone can i heal regain power oh no i ran out of time 
Okay, that's okay. I like the idea that we are slowly becoming more and more powerful. We're becoming a more and more effective god-killing machine. Oh, it's raining garbage down on us. We're not very good at, uh, like, one of our weaknesses. Apparently, we're afraid of lizard people flying through the sky and also garbage raining down on us and fireballs. Fireballs being shot at us. So we do have a, a few natural enemies. We are we are an incredibly strong 80s superstar, man. Ah, crap, we died. I'm gonna throw in some quarters and continue. Oh, he just comes back to life. <laughs> oh, oh my god, there's like a worm came out of the ground to eat me. Oh, look at that, oh my god. Oh, that's so crazy. Oh, they're firing rockets at us, okay. This game is like 1985 condensed into video game format. You've got your muscly dudes, you've got your sci-fi worms, you've got lizard people and sci-fi guns, and you've got uh, god-killing contra dudes. What more could you? What more could you want in a video game? Um, so we're going to be playing this game on arcade today, and I'm also going to check out the Sega Genesis version. Oh god, these stupid worms! Um, I, I th this game, so like a lot of arcade games back in the day, this game was basically ported to every every console out there. It was everything from the Commodore 64 to the ZX Spectrum, the Amstrad CPC, DOS. It was ported to the Sega Master System in Brazil and Europe. Um, the TurboGrafx-16. Oh god, look, this is, a uh, we're fighting now a dragon. Is this the second god? This is like, uh, Gozer or whatever from Ghostbusters. Uh, because that was a god, right? Like, the Ghostbusters, the Ghostbusters are also god killers. They, they killed a god. Um, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man was, uh, Gozer, wait, wait was it Gozer or Zool? No, Zool was the, the, the gatekeeper or whatever. That was what Dana Barrett turned into. So Gozer was the god. If the Ghostbusters can kill a god, so can we. But anyway, this game came out on so many different systems. Um, and often when I play games that have come out on many different systems, I like to try them on at least two. Not always, but once in a while. And so I kind of thought if we're going to play the arcade version of this... Um, should I be shooting his heart, by the way? Maybe his heart is where it's at. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue to revive here. Now we're going to be able to, like, uh, just basically... Uh, a coin coin feed our way to victory here because it's not like oh god it's not like we have any limits on how much money we can spend on this today can we what are we supposed to be shooting anyway i'm just gonna go over here and <laughs> figure out what there is to kill can we just shoot the heart i don't even know keep coming back from the grave you'll never defeat me okay now i'm just there we go blowing his heart up he died of a broken heart <laughs> We not only killed him, but we, we broke we broke the poor uh, dragon's heart. My guy's taking his shirt off so he can fight monsters more effectively. It's totally normal, guys. Sometimes a big muscly man has to take his shirt off to effectively fight monsters. But yeah, I decided Sega Genesis would make a good companion console to try this game out on. Because this is like an arcade game. And I'll be honest, like the Sega Genesis feels like the most arcadey of the home consoles to me. And this might be totally my own personal biases here, but, like, I don't know if you guys notice or not, like, the, the same difference that I do with the Sega Genesis, but it has, like, a very rock guitar feel to all of its music. Like, that that standard uh, Sega Genesis sort of sound. Ooh, flamethrower? Can withstand three shots. Increase vitality max. Weapons firepower. Oh, God. Okay, I want the laser. And I want more vitality and heal me. And is there anything else I can buy? Buy that. Okay, I just I bought it all. There we go. There's you can't take it with you. Might as well be spending this money. Look, I have armor now. Oh, and lasers. Cool. All right, let's do this. Oh, my armor blew off. So I'm back down to shirtless. So I, see, wearing armor into combat is is actually a good thing. You should not go into combat shirtless. But anyway, yeah, the Sega Genesis sound effects and music just always feels very, like, uh, uh, electric guitarish to me, and it feels very arcadey. And so it, I just kind of felt like it, the Sega Genesis made the most sense as a companion system. So we'll probably beat this, I'm thinking, on arcade, since I can just credit feed and continue to insert coins whenever I die. On Sega Genesis, we may not be so lucky. I'm pretty sure we, we won't have infinite continues there, but uh, but we'll give it a shot just to sort of see what it kind of what it kind of looks like, you know. Being on this quest, this playing through this thousand one uh, games book, uh, you know, part of the quest is just trying these games, seeing what they're like. 
um, and experiencing them. We Sometimes we're good at the game, sometimes we're bad. And sometimes we're lucky enough to play a game where it doesn't matter if we're good or bad because we can just insert fake quarters till the end of time. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so we are at the 397th game, which is pretty crazy. Um, I don't want to talk too much about, you know, the quest itself because, like, I want to sort of stay focused on the game. But I will just say that, um, you know, we, we are coming up to kind of a, a big landmark uh, in the series. We're going to be hitting our 400th game and I actually have something special planned for that 400th game. So, you know, if you're watching this video today... Maybe you've seen me before, maybe you haven't, but you may just want to mark your calendars that episode 400 is coming out. Meaning that we've been playing through this book for four years, and we have uh, tried 400 of the recommendations. Um, as far as I know, that's more than anyone else I've ever heard of. Um, so not to toot my own horn, but, uh, you know, beep, beep. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, let's continue talking about these gods. Oh, God, what are we looking at here? What is this? Oh, it's his knees. Okay, I thought, I thought we were looking at something far more inappropriate. I mean, I guess this part right here is inappropriate. Oh, God. Oh, we just destroyed his cod piece. Oh, yikes. That is going to hurt in the morning. We uh, Imagine, like, a, a, a hyper-roided-out fly showed up with laser beams and shot off your crotch. That's basically what happened to this guy. Um, now we're destroying his face. Um, okay, come on. Uh, oh, he's going to try and smash us, I think. It's not going to work, though, bud. Destroying his mask, destroying his face. Oh, God, continue. So I, I like how these old arcade games are really willing to let you just play the entire game. As long as, long as you're willing to pay, they will let you keep playing. Um, again, the Sega Genesis version, when we try that out, I suspect we're going to have a limited number of continues. Because when you had the game at home, they didn't want you to just beat the game every time you sat down to it. But oddly enough, this game apparently did not actually make that much money in the arcades. Um, I was reading it was a bit of a financial failure for Capcom. I mean, the graphics are cool. It, it is very neat having that sort of rotational uh, element. Like, I don't know many side shooters that uh, let you do that. Did they just say, did that god really die? No doubt about it. King of the gods. Uh, it's going by too fast. I can't even read it. Um, but yes, this game was a little bit of a financial failure for Capcom, um, and it basically got chalked up to... Oh, wait, 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 we're fighting, like, Egyptian dudes now? Like, just Egyptian guys in their underwear floating around shooting golden arrows against a dude with laser beams and, like, a rapid-fire machine gun and floating heads, like Rick and Morty style. Do they want us to show them what we got? Because I will show them, man, and it will be a laser... What we got is a laser to the face. Um, but anyway, there was a lot of competition back in the arcades in the 80s for, uh, so, you know, side-scrolling shooters. And even though this one has a pretty unique rotation mechanic, I guess it was too much. Um, and another element that meant that this game actually did not make much money is that the production of the arcade units of this uh, game was actually more expensive than, uh, than Capcom was hoping because the arcade boards needed to produce this game. There was, like, a shortage of them or something, so their prices went up, so... Long story short, this game was not what everything Capcom hoped it would be. Oh my god, look at all that money. Get it and then go into the shop. Boom! So the the economy in this world runs on zennies, which you get from killing... Um, new information came in. Which you get from killing uh, your enemies. Ultimate demolish power. Oh man, that's too much. Bullets bounce off walls! I will take it, increase my vitality, do that, do that. Is there anything else I can buy? Um, oh no, I didn't select the speed. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, there you go. Oh my God. Oh, there's wall bouncing bullets. How is this fair? Look at this. <laughs> it's just literally if they come anywhere, if, if enemies enter the screen, they die. Like, I was thinking in the first few levels when we were fighting those lizard dudes. Like, the lizard dude would appear on the screen, and he'd be, like, lining up his shot, and he would instantly be, like, blasted in the face with, like, a thousand bullets. You know, like, th these enemies... Like, imagine you were, like, one of the 10,000 enemies lined up for this level, and they're like, Alright, we got, we got, like, a really strong dude coming, coming to kill us all. He can fly, and he fires a million shots a second. When he appears... What we want you to do is fly towards them, and you got this bow and arrow. If you can just line up a shot and hit him, you know, if we can get 10 or 12 shots in him, he might die. 
You know, so it's like you, you, this guy comes like blasting around a corner. You're like lining up your arrow, and before you have, before you can do anything, he's like hitting you in the face with like a million bullets. That's basically what it's like being one of these like hench, henchmen. Um, I think if that ever happens to you, by the way, you know you're on the wrong side. When you're on the side that is, uh, you know, basically going to take on, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a superhuman muscle dude. Um, basically the the sci-fi incarnation of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the flesh. You basically should uh, should abandon that cause. You're on the wrong side. I can tell you d d d decidedly. Um, I don't even know what these blobs are. I don't like. I don't know what their move is because they die before anything happens. It's almost like they want to like morph into me. Like maybe they're uh, what would you call it? Like shapeshifters or something. But, like they never get a chance to show what they got because I just kill them right away. These electric. We can even kill the electricity spark things. I guess those are, given this is an Egyptian theme level, I'm sure these are people's souls just floating around the hallway, so we just wipe those out. And can we just go through the wall? I don't, like, I'm in like a, I'm, I'm stuck in the wall. That's really weird. Uh, what are these? Oh, maybe the enemies have, like, super bouncy bullets. No match for my bouncy bullets, though. Mine are, mine are better, man. Look at this. Yeah. You, you're trying. This is actually like a little a little challenging. It's almost like the enemies actually had a chance there, but turned out they didn't really have a chance. All right, what are we killing now? Show me Ra. I will kill Ra, your sun god. If we kill their god, do we become their god? I think that's the rules in ancient Egypt. I would not mind being an Egyptian god. They treated their gods well, I think. Then they like they like worship them and like make sacrifices and stuff to them. Like, if, if people were, like, you know, just giving me stuff, I, I would take it. <clears throat> I guess, like, every time somebody donates something to a YouTuber, it's like making a sacrifice to a gaming god. <laughs> oh, god, I died. Um, so, yeah, you guys you guys can make sacrifices to me if you want. Then, it'll be, then it will be like I'm a god. Oh, god. When I have to rotate the dial quite a bit, that's when they get me. I'm, I'm sure the, the original dial in the arcades... Uh, spun much faster, but like look how slow it is for me to rotate all the way around to the top right corner there Takes me some time The dial controller is cool, but it's got it's got its limits. Can, can I get in there by the way? Am I just supposed to like leave? What's supposed to happen here? Um, I don't I don't understand what I'm what I'm really fighting. Oh like now now he's shooting at me with his head thing. Okay, I'm just gonna keep doing this for a while. Again, we have infinite continues, so it's not really a concern. All the bite is taken out of some of these games when you have unlimited continues. Ugh. This is what it's like being rich in the 80s <laughs> in arcades. So, um, oh, we killed them. All right, we did whatever we were supposed to do. You know, if an eight-year-old Jay could see me now See me like rocking it on an arcade machine. You know, we live in such like a crazy time for games. Like I remember growing up, like I'd walk through an arcade. If I saw this game in an arcade, I would have loved to play it. But I, you know, uh, like this and a thousand other games I would have loved to play. And you couldn't play them all. But like nowadays we live in, we basically live in a time where any old arcade game you want to play, pretty much any game you can like emulate. So you can go and find like literally a hundred games today. More games than you would ever have enough time to play. And you could play them. Weapon firepower increases, I definitely want that. I already have that. Uh, let's increase my vitality further. Um, new information. Please attack centipede's neck area, that was worthless. Okay, there's like nothing else we need. Can withstand five shots. See, the armor is only necessary if you don't want to use a coin. You know, like, you don't want to use a quarter to revive yourself. Um, but for me, it's not really necessary. I am I am a god. Um, if these guys were to ask me if I am a god, I would say yes. I'm a god-killing god, in fact. Which uh, makes me the king of the gods. Okay, rotate down. Oh god, what what are these things? They're like the locusts. They're like one of the seven plagues of, of Egypt. Oh god, they're coming from every direction, too. Just keep inserting coins. I have the ultimate superpower, wealth, <laughs> personal wealth. I can I can afford to live forever. I wonder if we'll ever actually reach a time where people, where like medical technology is so good that like literally anyone could be brought back from the dead, and then you just won't be brought back if you're too poor. I guess 
Wasn't that actually the the storyline between behind Altered uh, Altered Carbon? Was that the name of the show? It was a Netflix sci-fi series. It was actually a really cool series. Uh, my only real complaint with it, it was supposed to have taken place like uh, 800 or 900 or like a thousand years in the future, but it really felt like maybe like 200 years in the future. Like it, it, it did not feel like the world would be as similar to it is, uh, as it is today in 900 years. So like it felt too close to our world, only with a few crazy sci-fi elements. So that, that was my only real complaint. Very interesting series. It's sort of like, um, sort of like Blade Runner-esque. Um, and like the Matrix a little bit. I don't know. It combined like a lot of things. Johnny Mnemonic. Uh, what are these blobs, by the way? They're giving me lots of zennies. I will take it. <laughs> lots of zennies. It sounds like a currency that uh, Tommy Wiseau would have come up with. You know, the guy who wrote The Room? Like that really bad movie, The Room? Because uh, he had a character named Denny in that movie. Sounds like zennies. We're we're buying we're buying stuff with with blue zennies. Oh god, damn! If I was actually if I didn't have infinite continues here, this would be like a really hard game. I'm gonna kill one of these things. Man, it takes so many shots, and it still didn't die. I think I missed a power up. I think if I uh, I think I missed one of the early power ups in this game, and I could have had an even more powerful gun. Let's try to not actually die to this thing. Let's, let's pretend like it could kill us. Ow, ow. Hey, come on. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on. Let's rotate, rotate, rotate. All right, and then go. Rotate up and go. Oh, my God, wait. My little, like, companion thing is gone. Didn't I have, like, a little companion drone? Oh, my God, it's dead. Oh, that sucks. Oh, God, what is this thing? Oh, my God. It's like some kind of some kind of gelatinous worm has come to kill us all. Oh god. All right, I did die. So there you go. I think that uh, if this game had been designed as a regular shooter, I would have better luck with it. But I maintain that I mean, I am using infinite continues. But one thing that is very hard for me is is being able to rotate things. Maybe I should like like I've been playing with the dial. Maybe I should just bite the bullet. And use uh, like an analog stick to rotate to rotate things. Actually, hold on. L let me make that change right now. Actually, okay. I uh, change it to an analog stick, and now my guy's like schizophrenic. <laughs> like I just tap the stick, and he like spins like crazy. Um, okay, hold on. L l let me try and fix this one more time. Okay, I think I got it. This feels a bit better. So now I can just use the analog stick to rotate, and I can just hold it. When I was spinning the dial, I kept having to, like, spin and spin and spin and, like, uh, it's hard to describe, but with just holding the stick in one direction or the other, it rotates. That works. Oh, God. This thing is, like, really hard to hit, though. You have to, like, kind of hit it in its neck, I think. I think. Oh, we finally killed it. Jeez. Um, you know what? By the way, I could have figured out you had to shoot it in the neck because it was glowing in its neck. I know, like, we spent $100 on a clue from the store. And they were like, shoot the thing in its neck. And it's like, that's uh, the most obvious tip ever. Um, in video games, all you do is look at for the like glowing parts of bosses. If if like their knee was glowing, you'd shoot their knee. If it's their head, their you shoot their head. Their heart is glowing, you shoot the heart. If it's you know the tongue, like you just look for whatever's glowing. And that's what you shoot. All right, we got some different power ups here. Everything powers up. Powerful laser, we can't afford that. Oh, these are like the ultimate, the, the alternate cannons. I see. Well, let's get everything powers up. The unit stone. And I don't think we can purchase this. I can't buy it. All right. So we can only buy one power up this time. What does it do? Anything? Everything powers up. Doesn't seem like it did anything. Doesn't seem like it did anything at all. We're fighting a sarcophagus. Um, are we doing damage to it? I can't even tell. Oh, yep. We were. Oh, God. All right. Let's go over here. Just shoot him in the face. So, I, I don't know what kind of mummy was buried here, but it looked like a monster. Oh, there it is. We're fighting its, its life force or something. Interesting. So my guess is that we have to like sneak by this thing. 
So you kind of have to play like a game of cat and mouse in terms of like where you are on the screen. Oh god. We oh that that kind of worked, actually. Boom. So I'm really curious how this is all going to work on the Sega Genesis because on in the arcade here, like you need to be able to rotate in 360 degrees. How the heck is that going to work on the Sega Genesis? Because the Genesis only has like a D-pad. Maybe like hold one of the buttons to move and another one to like rotate. That does not seem like it would be effective though. Oh man, keep dying. Um, oh shoot, insert a coin. Don't just die. Don't just lay there and die, man. You got gods to kill. This is what, the fourth god or something like that? No wait, this has got to be like the fifth god. We were, uh, a few of the gods were Egyptian as it turned out. Um, the god Bios, I feel like he's going to be a computer virus. I feel like it's like Megabyte from Reboot. You guys remember Reboot? It was like that Canadian... I mean, I guess you wouldn't remember it if you weren't Canadian, but it was the show where, like, it was about all the, the like, video game sprites that were, like, inside a, uh, a computer. And there was, like, a virus in the computer. And the whole premise of the show is, like, a user would be launching games, and then when games came in, all the sprites would have to go into the game and, like, fight the user. And if the user won, part of the computer was destroyed forever. Which never made any sense to me as a kid, because it's definitely not how computers work. It's not like when you play a game of SimCity... Well, SimCity has no end, but it's not like if, if you play a game of Street Fighter, if you win at Street Fighter, it permanently damages your computer or your console. It's like it doesn't matter if you win or lose, and playing the game does not damage your console. Anyway, now we're fighting through Japanese heaven. These are like samurai dudes in the clouds. They have strange mystical powers, or maybe it's like Chinese heaven, and these are like Chinese martial artist dudes, because there's like dragons flying around through the clouds. Either way, um... Oh god, we have like no money at all. Speed. Might as well buy this. How about ultra high speed? A gold flying stone. Does this like make me move faster? If so, that would actually be kind of useful. Um, oh yeah, I do see, I think I move faster. Do I move faster? I can't 100% tell. Maybe it's placebo. Feels like I'm moving a little faster. You know what they need is like a button that lets you just like wipe the screen. Like just destroy it. Oh my god, there's a giant face. I didn't even notice that. And he's shooting babies. Look, he's shooting like naked babies at me. What is happening in this game? Is that the god they worship in China? Is that like anyone anyone watching this video who's from China or Japan? Do you guys have any gods that are like giant zombie faces that spit baby ghosts? Because I feel like that is that is some messed up stuff if that is true. Um, there are no zennies in this level. Like, they're very few and far between. Oh, but there were a ton of zennies. I feel like these dudes should be giving up zennies. They don't seem to be, though. Now, all they give is grief and fireballs. Look! Freaking baby shooting zombie faced god. That is messed up. Fee fi fo fum, this guy's eating babies and spitting them back out. Oh, god. And we can't even kill him. He gets away every time. What a, what a, what a jerk. Um, I feel like I like the rotation a lot more that it's on an analog stick. Ma makes it a lot, it makes it make a lot more sense. Oh god, here it is. A giant crystal thingy. This is the god of diamonds. From De Beers. Or whatever, that diamond company that always used to sell diamonds. Their commercial was like, a couple of people. Just silhouettes of people. And some guy like putting a, a diamond ring on the silhouette of a girl. And it'd be like, because she's worth it. Yep, diamonds. And this is the god that was behind those commercials. He's a sneaky and vengeful god, a jealous god. You know, a god would only have to be jealous if there were other gods, honestly. Because if there are no other gods, then like, what is there to be jealous of? Like, oh no, they, uh, they don't, they don't worship me. I'm like the most powerful creature in the universe. But for some reason, I need constant reassurance from, uh, from, you know, Little little ape people. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I think I've just been killing too many gods. Killing too many gods. That that's a that now that's a Sunday or a Saturday when you spend the whole Saturday killing deities of different of different ethnicities and parts of the world. So I yeah, like I didn't know that China worshipped a giant uh, diamond in the sky. Sounds like a Beatles song, actually. I'm just gonna stand here and take it. 
Come on. Oh, nice try. I, it, it is really hard to not just, uh, just tank every hit when you know you have infinite lives. It, it's like playing a game with Game Genie on. Like, infinite lives, infinite health. Oh god, this is like the evil, evil Japan now. Things, things got, uh, things got, there's like organ music in the background. Mountains are on fire. Oh my god, jump in the job. I have like no zennies. 6,700. Can't buy anything. So I don't understand why I'm so poor these days. I really should regain my power though. Oh, what is that one? World's first auto tracking laser. All right, we got to save up 99,900 zennies. Is that possible? Does, so here's my question, I guess. Does it reset my zennies every time I die? Because if so, then there's no way that I'm going to get 99,000 zennies. But I think if I had some zennies, this level would not be as crazy. Ugh. Five, one. Okay, so I still have zennies. So I don't know why I'm not earning any zennies. It's because I'm not killing the dragons or something? Oh my god, these guys are brutal. I So I read when they were developing this game that they actually toned the difficulty of it down based on feedback. And I'm just kind of thinking, like, how hard was this game before you toned it down? Because this is brutal, man. Like, there's just stuff everywhere. It never ends. Guys, a million guys spawn on you at once. Like, look at all the bullets on the screen. How are you supposed to avoid that? I guess you're supposed to destroy those guns, but, like, I don't have the firepower. I don't have enough zennies to upgrade my gun, man. This is brutes. Brutal. Come here, you stinking... And, like, why, why are samurais more effective than lizard people or ancient Egypt? Or ancient Egyptian dudes? Like, I guess samurais, like, really know how to bring it. Oh, God. Or, or like, Chinese fighters or whoever the hell these people are. Why, why are these not, not giving up zennies? This country is so cheap. Give me some freaking zennies. We used to have so many zennies. We have like none now. Oh, I have 100,000 now. No, wait. I have 11,000. Yeah, 100,000. It's going to take me forever. I'm going to get that 99,000 homing laser thing. I feel like that... If I got the homing laser, at least I'd feel like I accomplished something. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at this. This is insane. We need a bomb. Where are your bombs? Ugh. I wonder if, if someone's keeping track of how many... Oh, look, it's like uh, Hercules or something. I wonder if we kept track of like how much money we'd spent. God, what are these guys? How much money we'd spent on quarters in this game, how much we would be up to. I'm, I'm willing... I, I bet it's like 10 or 15 bucks at this point um, in like extra lives. At least... <clears throat> at least 10 or 15 bucks in extra lives. Oh... Ouch. I don't like this tag team, man. I wish I had a second player. It's kind of it's kind of really uncool of you guys to fight in a team while well, it's just me. Are you even getting damaged? Like, I'm just... Okay, it looks like he kind of is getting damaged. I kind of want to pick on the red guy. I want one of them to die so that the other guy has to, like, fight alone. He, like, feels sad about life. Okay, how about we stay in the middle? Oh, God. Ow. <laughs> Let's shoot him right in the face. Right in the face, man. I'm not even paying attention to the blue guy. Me and him have an uneasy alliance because I have blue pants and he has blue everything. He's, uh, he's, uh, what is it? David, uh, David What's-His-Face from Arrested Development, the blue man group guy. Uh, David Cross. That's him. Good old Tobias Funke. He blew himself. That awkward moment right before the, the the hero shows up to fight you and you realize you blew yourself. Oh, they both blew up. The blue guy just died in sympathy, I guess. That's weird. And they like, what are they going for in for one last hug? What is happening? Bonus zennies. 31,000 of those. What? He's done for. I'm going to kill him today. I'll burn him with my aura. As they were picking up like a stuffed animal... Uh, of like a dinosaur. And we got 30,000 zennies. Honestly. Oh, we're fighting robots now. Finally, an enemy worthy of the muscly man. Oh, and we can finally get more zennies from the enemies. We'll take it. Come here. Die. Give me those zennies. Those sweet, sweet zennies. Sweet, sweet zennies. You die. Uh, oh, get it. <laughs> 
It's like, it's okay if I die, I just want to get all the zennies I can. Oh my god. <clears throat> so we fought our way through like a ruined hellscape. We fought our way through ancient Egypt. We fought our way through China. And now we're here. Powers up everything. You know what? I honestly don't want to spend any money. Because I want to get this... I want to save up for this thing. World's first auto-tracking laser. It entices me so. I, 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 gotta see, I gotta see it in action. We've seen all the other weapons, I mean. Uh, we've been playing most of this game now without our companion. Oh my god, look at the screen! How are you supposed to survive that? That's literally insane. There's no way. There's no way a normal human could survive that. Like, that's just bananas. How do we destroy this thing? Are we damaging it? I can't even tell. I would try and keep dodging uh, projectiles, but it just feels like... This is one of those games where it's like, you know... Maybe maybe some superhuman Korean who, who got really good at this game could do it, but like I feel like no normal mortal can actually do this. Although, I'm doing okay, I think. Actually, I'm surprising myself on this one. Those like little baby rockets were actually like avoiding me. Let's actually... <laughs> It's gonna be like, let's try and dodge here for real. I was like a thousand arrows and, and missiles land on me. Did I just die to a wall? I think a wall got me. You know another problem I just realized? I'm not doing enough damage to actually earn any zennies. Like I can't actually kill most of these things. My gun is so weak. Man, my gun is weak sauce. It did not get powered up enough. Ow. These like annoying arms, fireball arms wanting to grab me. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> okay, die. What what are, what am I fighting? I'm fighting like the incarnation of like angry fire. It, like really wants to grab you. Oh my god. Everything just if everything could die. Alright, come back to life. And alright, I didn't even kill the fire, it just got it got eventually it was like, oh man, this guy's being super annoying. Forget about it. Oh my god, are those homing lasers? Those are things I could own one day? Look like uh, the pool toys, you know those like big, uh, those big foam pool toy, the pool noodles. Look like a pool noodle that was coming to kill you, which which sounds in itself very terrifying. Man, what arcade games were you guys really good at back in the day? There's a question. So like you know, I say that if somebody was really good at this game, they actually you know could probably actually beat this. Um, wait, what is this? I haven't seen this yet. Repair armor. Oh, okay. We don't want any of that. We don't want any of this. We're saving up. We're saving our zennies for something awesome. Which kind of sucks because it means that we're not getting to see cool weapons because we're, n we're not getting to use cool weapons, which means we're not able to destroy things, which means we're not able to earn the zennies we need in order to buy the cool thing that needs lots of zennies. But we can't even kill these worms. Oh, I killed one. And one got killed from touching me. I'm gonna shoot at this guy. Forget about these worms. Yeah. Uh, was that doing anything? Anyway, what arcade games were you guys good at back in the day? I'm, I'm kind of curious. Is there like a game that was like this was your game, man? Like you were, you were really good at this game. I feel like one game that I was like pretty good at was uh, Off Road, Super Off Road. Oh God! Did you see that? I'm fighting, like, the Devil Angel, and he just fired a thousand lasers out of his wings at me. And he's also, I guess, uh, not Buddha, but what, was it, Vishnu or whatever? The god with many arms? He's like, he's like all the gods rolled into one. This is like, uh, the Mega Man of gods. He's defeated the other gods and absorbed their powers. Um, Off-Road, though, was a game that I remember being pretty good at. That's, uh, similar to this where, I mean, it's a racing game. But at the end of every level, you have to, like, go to a shop and, like, spend your money and choose what to upgrade. And I actually really liked... I really liked being able to upgrade your ship. Or your car, I mean. Because you could, like, choose what you wanted to upgrade and what you wanted to focus on. Did you want speed or, like, maneuverability and all this stuff. And I feel like on one quarter for off-road, I could actually play for hours and hours. That, and I really liked the X-Men arcade game. Um, I don't think I was particularly good at that one. But on one quarter, I could get pretty far. I feel like a game like this, one quarter does not get you very far. Um, and I kind of steered away from games like that. Um, the Simpsons arcade game was another good one that, like, one quarter you could, like, play for a fair amount of time. 
Not that long, but like a fair amount. A fair amount of time. Damn it. I need to like put more effort into dodging this guy, I think. Okay, so then he goes crazy. Nope. <laughs> I was like trying to preemptively dodge that, the movie just did, and I got killed by his other stupid things. Are we even damaging this guy? It's like I can't even tell. I I've like given up trying to dodge because he just gets me every time. Just gonna start throwing in a bunch of quarters at a time because we know we know we're dying. We know we're dying. But yeah, what arcade games were you guys good at? And I'm actually curious if anyone watching today was good at this game. If, if you were, I apologize for the gameplay you are witnessing here today. This is my first time ever playing Forgotten Worlds. First time ever playing. Um, I'll be honest, I was, I was wishing it would be uh, not as brutally difficult as this. Um, and or I wish I was better at it. Uh, those, those are two, two not mutually exclusive wishes. God. Can we kill this guy already? How do you die? You just die already, man? I'm like, I'm like literally like right in his face, unloading a machine gun on him. Give me my Denny's! Or my Zenny's! Yeah, again! This is crazy! How long until this, how, how long must this go on? Kill him already. Just shoot him right in the head. Is this the last boss, by the way? Like, I can't tell. I, I... Legit have been shooting at this guy for like what feels like forever. It's probably only been like three minutes, but damn that was brutal. No. Oh, oh, we got bonus zennies. Yes, we did We got some bonus I've done it. I'm still shivering <laughs> Yeah, me too, man uh, That can be taken out of context really badly um, Thank you very much peace now is returning to this town again this town We'll be building this town no matter how long it takes. The story of two heroes saving this world has become a legend. And we play for there will be no evil like the king of gods again. Thereafter, no one ever saw two heroes again. And the legend became more mystical and passed on to the people. I didn't even enter my initials because I was too enthralled by that, uh, by that post credit scene. The bad, the bad English, the poor translation was awesome. Oh, well, we actually beat the game. That was the last guy. Guys, we are god-killing monsters. We killed eight gods and the leader god. That is, uh... I'll say it impressive. Um, at least we get to see some of the other weapons. So there's, like, flamethrowers. So it's kind of neat. It's kind of like Contra. Because there's, like, different weapons. There's, like, laser. Um, there's homing. There's bouncing. There's flamethrower. There's machine gun. Um, you do have to buy them at the stores. Um, I like the idea of this game. I, you know what? Honestly, I kind of wish that this had been a platformer more like Contra. Um, like, because Contra had side-scrolling and top-down levels, if you think of Super C, uh, the sequel to the original Contra. They had top-down levels in between the side-scrolling ones. If you had actually had, like, a companion laser thing and you had had stores where you could, like, buy upgrades and stuff, I think that would have been awesome. Oh, look at that perfect scene of the two dudes just chilling. Uh, Finn. So wait, we never, we never got to spend our zennies. Oh, what a jip! I saved them for nothing. I'm sorry, guys. How anticlimactic. Uh, but yeah, I kind of wish that this game had been more like Contra, actually. But before before we render our final verdict on uh, Forgotten Worlds here, let's pop over and quickly take a look at what this game looks like on the Sega Genesis, and uh, in particular, how the heck do they translate a joystick and a dial? to a controller with a D-pad and three buttons. I am curious to see this, so let's take a look. By the way guys, before we get started, I actually looked up the controller I was using when I was playing this game on the arcade emulator just now, and it was the Mad Cats Xbox Live Arcade Game Stick, and you can see it right here. So it has a joystick with a button on top, and it has the four buttons, and it has a dial, and it has an analog stick. The dial, I will say, did not work super well, but it was cool having a dial. 
I feel like it's really hard to find uh, modern uh, USB controllers that have dials, and dials show up occasionally in old arcade games, and I still haven't found a perfect solution for playing with them. But I did technically play with a dial before I switched it rotation to that analog stick for a little bit, so uh, there you go if you're kind of curious about the joystick I was using. Anyway, on to the main attraction, Forgotten Worlds on the Sega Genesis. By the way, Forgotten Worlds in Japan is known as Lost Worlds, or Rosuta Waruda. So, there's a little bit more trivia. We can see, actually, here's here's the computer giving us a demo. The game actually looks very similar to the arcades. Whoa, that was a fast demo. It just ended. It just ended. It was like the best seven seconds that they could come up with. All right. Notice, by the way, Capcom 1988 and reprogrammed by Sega 1989. Let's go into the options here. Auto fire. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. You know, I've often said that in a lot of these shooting games, there's absolutely no reason to ever let go of the fire. So, yeah, sure. Uh, auto fire on. Game difficulty. Normal. I, damn, I was going to turn on easy, but normal or hard. All right, we'll go with normal, and we will start a one-player game. Um, so we got the same intro. Bio's here summoning the dragons. Did you find him? That guy's totally like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Don't worry, we'll finish him today. I like how the black dude is like an awesome mohawk. And off we go. All right, so I am just firing automatically. Oh, okay. I see what they've done here. So the A button kind of rotates you, and the C button rotates you. So I'm guessing the B button would be the button that you would normally use to uh, shoot. But the fact that you can auto-fire, you know what? Actually, that makes this very manageable. Very manageable. Huh. The D-pad is being a little finicky, um, but I will say that it almost feels like the A and the C button make better rotation, make it easier to rotate than uh, than the uh, the analog stick did. Welcome. Okay, do we want any of this stuff? Withstand three shots, auto-tracking missile, shoot in all directions at once. Yes, we'll take it. If I've learned anything, don't hoard your zennies, because you can't take them with you, folks. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is fair. <laughs> I feel like in the first few levels, um, you're firing so much on the screen that, like, the enemy just has, like, no chance. Oh, God. But later on, I feel like the opposite happens, where now they're firing so much on the screen that you have no chance. So it's very much like a one of, one of you is screwed. It's just, is it you or is it the computer? Um, the level so far seems pretty much identical to what we saw in the arcades. It's pretty much the exact same level. Um, so it's kind of interesting. We destroy that thing, yeah. I mean, the graphics seem reasonable. I will say, I don't think this is the, the nicest looking Sega Genesis game. The arcade did look better. But <laughs> this one looks pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable. So I guess we would just carry on here. We're not going to replay the whole game here. Um, of course, because we've, we've really seen this before, but I am a sucker for picking up a few zennies. A few zennies for the road. Destroying those things, whatever they are. Oh, zennies! Get the zennies! Alright, this is the boss. <laughs> a heart, a, a pulsating heart creature in the background. That's our first boss. Alright. I feel like he, his shots cannot hit us here. <laughs> so we just, we stay here. Let me put my, the controller down for a second. There we go. Ah, gaming at its best. We got an auto fire on. I'm stretching. I'm gonna stand up here for a second and oh, I'll just stretch my back. There we go. This is video gaming, folks. I'm gonna beat this boss on auto mode. This is like the autopilot of video games. Wow. Well, um, Forgotten Worlds here. Oh, jeez. I dropped my clipboard. Forgotten Worlds here is one of the games, the book of Thousand One video games you must play before you die. And as it completes itself on this first level here, I will say that the the book, the Thousand and One book, was oddly unflattering of this game. It's actually a little confusing. So normally, uh, games that are included in this Thousand and One book, they're games that you actually should play before you die. Um, we beat the first level, by the way. Was not holding the controller. Um, there actually are levels that you should play. Here, you know what? Let's see how far we can get without me touching the controller at all. So I'm, I'm really just, I'm now just have the controller just put down on my desk here. I'm not even touching it. Ooh, and I even got some zennies. I'll take it. 
But normally the book includes games that, like, you should play, you know? Like, that's the title of the, the book. The whole, like, written description of this game was, like, very negative. It was very weird. They were talking about how, like, you know, there are better games and, like, you know, this game has problems. And I was sort of thinking, like, why the heck are they saying that, that this game is a, a must-play? And then it came out at the end. Um, oh, <laughs> look at that game over screen. You don't get any extra lives? Are you serious? Oh, my God. You have to beat this game with no extra lives? Are you freaking kidding me? Wow, so where's the arcade? You can just insert quarters until you win. This The home console version, it's like good effing luck. Oh my god, that's brutal. Um, well, the auto fire still works pretty well, so we're gonna leave this and let it do its thing. But yeah, the book was oddly unflattering until the book mentioned that this game had stores and the idea of like powering up your character and buying upgrades and stuff was like a, a lasting, um, had like a lasting impact on games to come. And I, I will agree that I think like these action -y games having, I'm actually gonna aim here for a bit, having uh, stores and having upgrades and stuff is a really neat idea. And it is something that you saw more and more in games after this game. So, you know, if that is the legacy of this game, then I guess it is important for historical purposes. But um, I, was, I was shocked that they would include a game that they really did not sound like they enjoyed. You know, really from the write-up, did not sound like they enjoyed it. As far as, like, my opinion of this game, I think that, like, as far as old uh, arcade games go, this one is reasonable. It is very unique and, and neat in that you sort of rotate 360 degrees around you. It does have the store mechanic, which I agree with the book. I liked a lot. Um, I think this game is, is too hard and hectic for, like, a casual player. You know, if you're a hardcore arcade player and you really enjoy a challenging shooter, you will enjoy this one. But I found it to be, like, insanely difficult. And if I couldn't basically cheat and just insert all the quarters I wanted, there's no way in hell I would have beat this game. I would never be able to, to beat this game. So, um, there you go. It's, it's kind of a cool idea for a game. I think it's too hard for a casual player. But for someone looking for a challenge, um, there might be a challenge here. Um, anyway, that's it for me today. Guys, what do you think of Forgotten Worlds here? Is it a game that you think is a must-play? Do you have other thoughts and opinions? Feel free to share them in the comments down below. And as always, whatever you think of this game, hopefully you had fun today. Um, if you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. We are nearing our 400th game. And as I say, um, it's sort of a monumentous occasion for us because, I mean, that's 400 games. We are 40% of our way through this book. Which <laughs> does not sound like a lot, but again, I, I don't know of anyone who, who has played this many games in the book. So, um, it, it does feel like a bit of an accomplishment, even to get to 40%. But uh, don't think for a second that that means I'm going to lose motivation, not hit the 1,000. Guys, we are only six years away from hitting the 1,000 videos. Um, and playing every game in that dang book. So uh, be sure to, to stay with me on that journey. I need you guys. You guys are my motivation. So please, you know, comment on this video. Let me know you're out there watching. But anyway, until next time, you guys take care of yourselves and uh, continue playing those old retro games. Peace. I've done it. I'm still shivering. <laughs>